Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about reflections in the sine and cosine graph. Now first I want to say there's two kinds of reflections you can have. There is an x-axis reflection and a y-axis reflection. Let me show you what both look like with the sine graph specifically. So with this sine graph, this is what a normal sine graph looks like, something like that. And if you reflect it along the x-axis, remember, this is the x-axis, the horizontal one. If you reflect it along the x-axis, your graph will now look like this. It will be a mirror image flip going the other way, just like that. And the way you would write this as a function is you would say this is sine x, and you would say this is negative sine x. In other words, whenever you want an x-axis reflection, the negative sign goes in front of the sign. Similarly, if you wanted to do this to the cosine function, it would look like this. So here's the normal cosine function. It starts at 1 and then goes like that. And if you want to reflect this along the x-axis, well, now you start from the bottom position, and then everything else follows like that. So again, this is the cosine function, cosine x and below is negative cosine x because it starts from the bottom. Now let's talk about y-axis reflections. So y-axis reflections look a little bit different. Again, I'll start with the sine. Uh, this time I am going to have to have the positive and the negative side. So here is the sine function again. It looks like this. And technically, the sine function also goes on the negative side like that. If you flip along the y-axis, like a mirror image along the y-axis, you are going to get this. So first, if I graph my negative portion and move it over here, it's going to look like that. And if I move my positive version over there, it's going to look like that. And if you don't completely understand how I did that, I just want you to notice that now it's going the other way than it was before. So this is the function sine x, the original. And if you want to do a y-axis reflection, then the graph is the sine of negative x. Notice where I put the negative this time for a y-axis reflection. And one thing you'll notice is that the sine of negative x will actually look identical to the negative sine of x. And that's true. Like if I look at this blue function here and the very first function I drew, this one up here, these two functions will be identical to each other. And if you don't believe me, you can plug it in a graphing calculator and you'll see that I was right. I'm always right. And the reason for this is because this sine function, it's called an odd function, but we're not going to talk about that today, but it's called an odd function. So if you ever hear that, it basically means this underlined portion right here. And then what about for cosine if I do a y-axis reflection? So for cosine starts up here, goes like that and then doing the same thing the other way looks like that. Well, if I flip this one along the y-axis, you'll notice that it's not actually going to be any different because if I graph the left portion on the right side, it still starts at the positive. And if I graph the right portion on the left side, it still starts at the positive. In other words, these two functions look identical. Again, the top one is cosine x. The bottom one is the cosine of negative x. So it looks like when there's a y-axis reflection, nothing changes for the cosine. So in other words, the cosine of x is equal to the cosine of negative x. And the reason why this is, we say cosine is an even function because we have this relationship. But again, you don't need to know what that means in this video. I'll have to make another video to explain that. But that's what a y-axis and an x-axis reflection will look like in a graph. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.